Hi, I'm John Weber with TechNection, and welcome to this first in a series of episodes concerning how to customize your distribution based on the Yachtville project. So first, to the why of all of this. What we provide are recipes for images that are meant to run on our development boards, but the logical next step for developers is to customize them for their purposes, which with the Yocto project is not super intuitive and takes some time to learn. So in this series of videos, I'm going to take you through the process to customize a distribution based on our Yocto VSP. You'll learn how and why to create your own metadata layer, which is important to be able to maintain the customizations you'll need for your distribution, create your own machine, which allows you to control to a much greater extent the code that supports your board, create a custom bootloader recipe, which will also include changing the splash screen, which is something that almost every developer with a display in their embedded project wants to be able to do, create a custom kernel recipe so that you can build from your own kernel source and configuration and make changes to the device trees and so on, and finally, to create your own image recipes, which you can use to add packages to your images or take packages away, or in general, customize images for your use case. In this episode, we're going to lay the foundation for the next episodes. We'll be making a custom layer and a custom machine file in that layer. We'll take it step by step, starting with building an image from source using our unmodified BSP and then running that on the board. Then we will create a layer to house the additional custom metadata including a custom machine configuration file that we will create today and build a new image for our custom machine and then we'll run that on the board. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so in step one, what we're going to do is we're going to build an image from scratch using the normal process for the Pico IMX 8M mini machine. To do that, we're going to go to our GitHub, github.com slash technection slash tn-imx-yakta-manifest and then I'm gonna to go to the Zeus branch here. And so we're just gonna follow along the instructions. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this. Actually, I'm just gonna copy this real quick. I'm gonna hold that for a second. And then I'm going to go to the directory that I like to use to build Yocto images. So I'm gonna to go to projects, tn yocto And then I'm gonna make a directory here, zeus-next. I'm gonna cd into that. All right, now. I'm gonna go ahead and I've already copied this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just paste that there. And then I'm gonna use a different manifest for the build. So instead of using the 5.4.24 manifest, which is what you'll see here by default, I'm gonna use the 5.4.70 manifest. We're all done there. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to run repo sync. And instead of using dash J8, I'm gonna use the number of cores that I have, which will be dash J4 repo sync dash J4. It's just the number of cores I have attached to this virtual machine. Okay, so that's done now. Next thing to do is to initialize the build. So, we're going to need to specify the machine and we're gonna to need to specify the distro that we're going to use. So I can just do that by setting up the environment variables in the command line. So uh, machine, in this case, we're building for pico-imx8m mini, pico-imx8mm, and then distro is, I'm just gonna use fsl-imx-xwayland. And then I'm going to source the TN setup release script. And then I have to provide it with a build directory, build-xwayland. It'll create this directory for you. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just set that up. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. And you'll have to accept the EULA. So you'll just spacebar through this. If you're a glutton for punishment or particularly concerned, you might read that whole thing. So we're set up. So if I just do ls here, the only directory we have now to reset up, and notice that it created a build-xwayland directory. The only directory we have right now is the conf. So if I, if I look in the conf directory, I'm just gonna go and cd into conf, and you'll see a bunch of files here. The two main ones that you're gonna be concerned about are bblayers.conf and local.conf. I'm gonna cheat a little bit here, and I'm gonna copy another file here that I find incredibly useful, and that is a file named site.conf. So I keep this file elsewhere on my machine, and I'll just go ahead and copy it here, and I'll show you the contents of it. So cp, total slash projects, sources, site.conf, site.conf. All right, and I'll show you what this is. So let's check that out. 
via SiteConf. Okay, so in SiteConf, you can set up a number of variables that will help drive your Yocto build, and it also could um, override some other variables that you have elsewhere in the system. Site.conf is processed uh, at the same time local.conf is. So there are a couple directories that I like to make sure that I specify for all my builds. And one is dldir, which is a download directory. It's where all of your downloads are stored. And I like to have that in a central location just for efficiency. Um, and then the sstate.dir, that is your shared state directory. For the same reasons, I like to have that in a centralized location. And in here, BB number threads, I set that to four. And then parallel make, I set that to four. Um, that's just however many um, bit big threads are being used at the same time, how many different bit big processes can be run. And then this is the number of make of, of processes that can be run during make. So um, there's a number of other things that are set up in here. Um, that's just examples for, this is just my use, um, but uh, I'll show you how to use them later. Um, this is a, a way of overriding um, different variables uh, in other packages. You can just uh, type in the variable name and underscore pn dash uh, dash the, uh, the, the recipe name um, and it'll override a variable within that recipe which is very useful for doing things like diverting to a new git repository or changing the branches or something like that for development. Um, but the purpose of this is to show you how to do that not inside of siteconf or local.conf but it's to show you how to do that in, uh, in a metadata layer that you own and you manage. So this is a much more um, manageable way of doing it than, than to use uh, these uh, sort of top level configuration files. Now, the next thing to do is just to build. So to do that, we just run bitbake imx-image-core. That's the image that we're gonna be baking right now. And we're gonna go ahead and fire that off. Okay, so it's gonna take a little while to do that. Uh, you'll see a bunch of what were really just benign warnings here. But uh, in any case, what you'll see is uh, the sort of parsing recipes. It'll take a little while to make that happen. So we're gonna go ahead and pause this um, and then we'll pick it up after the image has been built. So see you guys here in a few minutes. We are done now, so ls temp slash deploy slash images and then in the machine is in the machine directory there and that's a bunch of files the main one that we're looking for is this rootfs.wic.bz2 but i'm going to take this board i'm going to connect it up i'm going to turn on the power and i'm going to go ahead and open up um, a terminal so sudo screen i like to use screen because it's simple slash tty usb zero 115, 200, that's the baud rate. I'm gonna go ahead, so UMS 0 MMC 2 to export the UMMC to USB. And then I'm gonna go ahead and so connect that to Linux, flash file. So I'm gonna find a location where I'm gonna put it. So I'm gonna put that in my Yocto build, Zeus next temp deploy images, Pico MX8 MM. And then I'm gonna find the wick.bz2. There we are. Select my target. This is the UMMC from the uh, UMS export from the board. Go ahead and flash. You gotta type your password in, make sure you're not doing something stupid. And then, um, so it's gonna take a little bit um, to go ahead and, uh, and decompress that image and then write that image to the UMMC and then validate the image. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, pause here for a minute. Okay, so now the flashing process has completed and we're gonna go ahead and close up Blaina Etcher. I'm gonna control C out of UMS and U-Boot. And you can see in the image we have the U-Boot is just showing the splash screen there. But I'm gonna go ahead and just type reset and U-Boot. You could very easily also just hit this little um, reset button. And then, so this is the image that is booting. So it's basically the same image as what you saw before. So this is the Pico MX 8 mm machine. It doesn't do a whole lot more, but just show that splash screen. But one thing I want you to notice is this host name. So just note that the host name is the same as the machine name. Um, in Yocto, uh, you can obviously customize that. You can, as with almost anything you can customize in Yocto, but this is the default um, selection. So um, that's all I wanted to show you with that. Now the next task, we're gonna go ahead and create a new layer, and that's gonna be the foundation for all the rest of the tutorials that are going to happen in this series.
So now we're going to go through the process here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to basically create a new window because uh, that's where we're going to do most of our customization here. So um, where we need to be is in the sources directory. So this is where all of our metadata lives. And you can see a bunch of different directories here containing a lot of different um, open embedded metadata. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and create a layer here. All right, so in order to show the layers that you have, you can just go to bitbake dash layers show dash layers. All right, and this has to actually be run from within the build directory. So you can't go back to another directory and do that. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add a layer. So bitbake dash layers, and we can do create dash layer. And then all I need to do is give it the directory. So um, dot dot slash sources slash meta. And then we're going to create uh, a, a fun kind of uh, project name. I think the name Scorpion sounds suitably interesting and menacing and kind of tech cool. So we're going to go ahead and do that. All right, so now we can go ahead and run bitbake dash layers, add dash layer, dot dot slash sources slash meta, meta dash scorpion. All right, so we have that now. So if I go bitbake dash layers, show dash layers, I should see a layer called meta scorpion. And there it is. So now we have our layer here. Um, we can go ahead and go there. Uh, CD to meta dash scorpion. For the purposes of this exercise, we're going to have create a machine and we're going to make a very simple uh, change here. We're going to go to conf, CD to conf slash machine. Okay, we don't have a machine directory, CD conf. All right, we're going to have to make a machine directory and make dir machine, CD to machine. All right, now we don't have anything in here, obviously. Um, so we're going to create a machine. Now, how are we going to create a machine? Well, the easiest way to create a machine in this case right now is to just copy the Pico IMX ADA mini machine configuration file to this layer and just make a few modifications to it. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to go CP dot dot slash go all the way back. Meta TN IMX BSP conf machine. Pico imx 8 mmconf and we're going to copy that here. And I'm just going to move that, rename it to a new file. I'm going to call that Scorpion all right, for the machine that we're building, scorpion.conf. All right, so now we have that. Now we can go ahead and vi scorpion.conf. And we've got to change a few things here. So we're going to go up to the very top and we're going to change name Scorpion, all right? And then we're going to say, just change some, some things here to be complete for Scorpion. All right. And then I'm going to change this to my name. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to go through and we need to delete some of the machine specific overrides here that are being made. This uh, variable here tells uh, a recipe um, which uh, device tree files to populate um, in our uh, in our um, boot directory. So we're going to go ahead and just kill the machine specific um, override there because if that was in place, then because our machine name has changed to Scorpion, that machine specific override would not um, uh, occur and we would get no device tree files um, in our boot directory. So we wanna not do that. Now I just jumped down a little bit and I'm gonna look for any other machine specific overrides. And I see here that is another one and I'm just gonna kill it because we actually don't need it in this case because we have a new machine name called Scorpion. And I'm going to delete that one. All right. Again, we don't we we want to we want to delete all this stuff. These these two are, are commented out, so I'm not going to worry about them. Um, we just want to delete all the machine specific overrides because we want these to uh, apply to our machine. So we're going to go ahead and exit out of this. So colon right quit 
bang. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to change the machine that we're building for. Um, and that is the easiest way to do that is just to vi local.conf, vi conf, local.conf. Come back here. So instead of Pico IMX 8MM, we want to change this to Scorpion. Okay, and we're ready to bit bake again. So bit bake IMX dash image dash core. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and run that again and we should start building for the Scorpion image. So we're gonna kick that off. Okay, so now we are done um, with the build of our image, which should be Scorpion. Um, and we're going to ready to go ahead and download this to our board. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and reboot the board here. Then we're going to re-export. Then we're going to go ahead to our Bolena Etcher. Such a nice tool. All right, so now we're going to find our images again. Now we have a new machine name here, Scorpion. And then we have IMX image. Here we go. Go ahead and run this bad boy. All right, flash. And as always, make sure you don't do something stupid. So it's going to take a few minutes to go ahead and do that. So we're going to go ahead and pause the recording for a few minutes and then we'll come back. All right. So now we are done flashing our image. We're going to close that back up. I'll control C out of UMS on U-Boot and I'm just going to hit the reset. And what we should see now is we should see this thing boot up with no problems, but our host name, which corresponds to the machine name, should change. So let's see if that happens. And there it is. Very good. So now we have a machine named Scorpion. All that really is is evidence that our machine was built successfully and that we have now a new layer um, with our machine there loaded. And we can use that to do tons of other customization. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and sign off. Just to remind you, this is just the first episode in a series of episodes concerning Yocto project customization. The next episode is going to be customizing the bootloader, including customizing the U-Boot splash screen. Then we'll have an episode on customizing the kernel, including a custom kernel configuration. And then finally, we'll have uh, an episode on customizing images, including package groups. So stay tuned for that. Thank you again for your attention. This is John Weber. See you next time.